Okay, I've been chomping at the bit to get out to the Elite and start messing with it. But uh, all the snow requires me to keep plowing day after day. But uh, today we're going to get out and into the shop and make some chips. Stay tuned. Let's go ahead and get this uh, powered up. And this uh, boots up really quickly. Um, you're really going to like that part of it. Okay. And it's uh, all booted up. Uh, we do have the emergency uh, stop button as a safety measure. So you hit that and then release it. Just make sure that it's working. And then in order to home the machine, you double tap the home. Uh, it'll flash at you. Okay, and now it's, uh, it's homing. I find this a little bit on the slow side. I might speed it up uh, in the setup uh, window and I'll walk through that uh, with you guys. all homed up and uh, first thing I want to do is to go to the F1 screen this is going to be uh, your setup screen uh, when the admin login comes in I believe they've removed the um, the password that was required you just hit enter and um, we've got general settings homing a number of different items here we'll touch on a f some of them not all of them but uh, if I double tap on the general settings, it will bring it up. And currently I've set my machine uh, to inches. Uh, you could uh, set it to millimeters by tapping that uh, top button. Uh, you could also change the orientation of your screen, uh, the machine bed orientation, um, do some auto loads uh, for the um, programs. And um, I'm not gonna mess with those at this time. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hit save because it's all uh, set up the way I want it. So if I double tap on homing, you can see here the sequence of um, the homing. So Z goes up first, then you've got X and then Y. Currently the homing feed rate is set to 20 inches per minute. Um, you saw how long that was. I, um, I may leave it at that, uh, but I'm going to show you that uh, you can come back in here and uh, alter that. I'm gonna change it to, uh, let's call it 100 inches per minute. So that should go a whole lot faster and we'll hit save. And um, a couple of other uh, items here, you've got your main spindle, lubrication if you're gonna need that, uh, tool changer if you, if you decide to put one on there. Uh, your uh, motor settings are uh, X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, so if I double tap on the X, you'll see that um, the uh, travel per revolutions is set uh, in inches. Uh, I want to say that uh, that is 10 millimeters. Um, you've got uh, your maximum feed rate, uh, your acceleration, uh, which is a whole lot faster. Um, your travel min, so that's your um, soft, minimum soft limit zero uh, travel maximum is your maximum soft limit i've actually got mine set to 48 and a uh, and an eighth and we can go ahead and hit save you can do the same with all of the other axes um, the touch probe uh, just uh, assigns a um, tool number to it i haven't done that yet so i'm just going to leave it as is for the time being um, we'll get to another screen where you can actually enter the probe um, dimensions uh, so that, uh, you know, it's fairly accurate. Um, auto tool, QR scanner, user account. The last one that I do want to show you is the save and load. So uh, if you go to the uh, forum, uh, Onefinity forum, uh, the MASO settings are all there. 
um, and you can download them, follow, uh, read through the instructions, uh, create the folders on your uh, thumb drive, and then uh, load the two, the two files, one is settings, the other one's tools, load from that file, and then you plug it into uh, the port, which is down here, and uh, uh, go ahead and load from file. You need to have a USB in the controller in order for um, files to load, even if you're uh, connected through Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, there's no internal memory, that's, that's the reason for that. So let's go ahead and load from file, and the settings are loaded right from the Maso uh, 5 axis settings uh, HTG file, which was on the thumb drive. And then once we've got that done, we reboot the machine. Again, takes a moment. We'll have to hit the emergency stop uh, uh, again. Okay, and release home and there we are uh, if you want to set this to zero you hit your x zero y zero and z is already set at zero okay so the next screen that we have is the f2 screen and the f2 screen is kind of your working screen when you've loaded a file it will show up here in this area and again it's important that you hit rewind uh, on that file uh, currently, I don't have a file on here right now, uh, so that's not going, so you can see here, I've got a homing error there. Okay, now it's ready, and if I were to hit that, okay. Um, so you hit the rewind uh, for the uh, file before you start it, then your cycle start is your play, and your feed hold is your pause or uh, stop. Um, the spindle, once you hit the cycle start, the spindle will change over to spindle um, clockwise. Um, and it'll take about five, six seconds for it to spin up before the uh, job starts. We'll, we'll actually cover that here in a few minutes. So that's what this screen is. If you go to your jog and probing, you have either step modes in increments that are highlighted here. There's a little green dot on the 0.0005. I'm gonna change it to 0.1, and it will only move 0.1 inches every time I hit that. Okay, and you can see the value up here. Well, if you hit continuous mode, it will flash red, and then it's just a matter of uh, changing your speed up. You don't want it at zero, and you can alter that to go really fast or really slow. So that slider feature is really nice uh, because as you can see, it uh, uh, you have a little bit better control. Okay, um, this button here is for probing. And we'll get to the probing here. As you can see here, you've got uh, nine squares, a tic-tac-toe board. You could probe X and Y from any of the four corners it's preset to probe from the top right corner, and you probe Z from the center quad, uh, center uh, square, and uh, we'll show you that. The, this is where you can enter the offsets on your um, machine. Um, I took a caliper to my uh, probe, and I noticed that I need to make some changes here. So my uh, axes, I wrote them down here, uh, for X is 2.116, so I'm going to 2.116. For Y, it's 2.106. Oops. And I just measured inside the pocket area for X and Y, and then I calibered uh, the Z offset, which is 0.5775. Point five seven seven five. Okay, and everything's there. We can save the settings. And uh, now um, we'll go to the probing uh, once I get the material set up. But let's continue on. Uh, the F4 screen, our tools and offsets. Um, you can enter different tools with tool numbers. 
or different offsets uh, on your work table. Uh, the one I like here is the parking feature. Uh, so if you wanted it to go to the back right, um, you can set um, the offset or the coordinates of where you want the machine to go. I've got mine set to go to the far back right corner. Mine is a journeyman, so it's 48 for X and 32 for Y, and we'll hit save. And to park your machine after you've run a program, we'll go back to the uh, MDI screen, hit MDI, and it'll say go to parking position. So if I were to hit this, goes clear back to the uh, back corner. Okay, last window, a uh, conversational, I'm not gonna touch on that uh, as I'm still trying to understand uh, the feature of this, I'll just show you the screen. It's pretty blank here that apparently there are different wizards you can enter into the conversational. Um, so uh, more to come on that later. The last window is the F6 window, which is the load file. You uh, essentially plug in your um, USB and then uh, you will have your file show up here. You select the one you want and click on load and it will bring it up and um, it will also give you a visual display here in this window. All right, so we have our material ready. We're going to locate the probe in the uh, pocket over the uh, lower left corner. Um, this is where I have my origin set and my design. Uh, we will not be locating the bit over top of the circle on the probe. We're going to locate it behind uh, the back of the probe. And uh, always make sure to put your magnet on. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to move it over just a little bit uh, in X. And a little bit forward in Y. And we'll lower the bit so that uh, it's deep enough to make contact with the probe. Okay, so that's ready to go. It looks like it will make uh, the appropriate contact. And I generally try to keep it, uh, oh, probably three quarters of an inch or so from uh, the back right corner of the probe and maybe a half an inch back behind it. <coughs> so um, now what we'll do is we'll come over here. We will hit the probe button. Um, this is the corner where we're going to be probing from X for uh, Y and for X. And so uh, that's the uh, square that I will uh, touch. And I will go ahead and do that now. And you will see that uh, it moves forward, touches off, moves across so that it can probe for X. Okay, so now that that's done, we will uh, flip the probe over. We'll raise Z so that it clears the block. This time we're going to press the center square for uh, the Z probe, which would be this one right here. And I'll go ahead and hit that. And we're all set. Okay, we'll go ahead and remove the magnet and the probe. And now if we come back over to our screen here, I'm going to alter this camera a little bit. We'll go ahead and exit the probing. If we go to the program and MDI screen, you can see uh, that it does have a go to work origin. So I'll go ahead and press that and it's going to raise up and move into that uh, uh, beginning cord that uh, corner so now we're ready to to uh, start our file as I pointed out earlier uh, we hit the rewind button and then we hit cycle start one last thing uh, that I failed to mention I've got my router plugged into the back of the power bar so the um, 
it's already in the on position, but when you hit cycle start, it will actually start up on its own. There's another uh, uh, plug on the back of the power supply for the uh, for your vacuum system uh, when you're running that. Uh, for video purposes, I'm not running a dust boot or vacuum, um, or dust collection rather, um, just so that you can see what's going on. Hopefully this gives you a quick high-level view of the Onefinity Elite with the Maso controller. Uh, more information will be coming out, but uh, I did want to get this uh, initial video out as uh, more and more of these machines uh, start shipping. So happy carving. We'll talk to you soon.